Hello again. Um, my name is Dimitris again. Uh, I'm mostly known in the community for my work on the JBoss application server. So I was wondering who has heard about JBoss? Good. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. So this is a story, you know, with tears and cries about how we managed to uh, adopt Kanban uh, in JBoss and uh, survived the, to tell the story. So I want to make a, yeah, so uh, just a few words about me. I'm uh, working in Red Hat for 15 years uh, and a bit more. And through most of my career there, I was uh, doing work in the application server team. The last year, I'm, I've moved on a little bit, so I'm, I've started a new team in Red Hat, uh, dealing with the Quarkus, Quarkus product. Have you heard about Quarkus? You should, you should. Um, so this is about, you know, past history for me now. Uh, disclaimer, uh, I'm not a agile coach, neither Kanban expert, and I can, uh, uh, I'm a, I'm a certified unexpert because I took the test at the boot from a bit and I only scored uh, 9 out of uh, 14. So I'm definitely not an expert. But um, we have a lot of experience building uh, kick ass uh, products uh, like uh, the JBoss application server. We disrupted the, the whole industry, you know, WebSphere, WebLogic, uh, the Red Hat acquisition 2006. Last year, IBM bought Red Hat, $34 billion. So we're doing something good there. And this story started at the turn of the century. Um, it was around year 2000 where I was working for a telecoms company in Greece, Intracom. And we were doing you know, a lot of interesting stuff there. And we were also using some open source. And open source was a taboo word back then. It was like a secret. We shouldn't tell open source, you know. We shouldn't tell our customers that there's open source there. But the interesting thing for me was that um, during day, we were building products there. And during night, we would go home and work as volunteers on this open source project. And it was a bit of a magic world because this distributed um, space with people working from their bedrooms, essentially, was very, very interesting. And you could make the comparison, you know, like uh, you have a company, structured processes, documents, design, blah, blah, blah. And then you had this uh, renegade community that somehow managed to develop software at a quality level that, you know, you would be jealous about. And the way this worked was because, you know, it was code first, uh, many releases, often releases, test-driven development back then, 20 years ago, CI, coding standards, minimal documentation, just the essentials. So basically, you, there was this requirement that for an open source project to work and produce something useful, you had to apply a minimum set of a meaningful process to make it work. So back then, uh, you could say we were doing uh, XP, extreme programming, in the open source project. We didn't quite know about the names, but that's what we did. And this is the beginning of the story. So that was a quick introduction. I'm going to take you through uh, the definition of the problem, what we try to solve with Kanban. And the different stages we, we went. Uh, again, this is a subjective experience. You know, you might be doing things different. Um, but this is, you know, this works for us. So maybe some, you get some ideas for your own projects. And if I have time at the end, I will also show you a little bit of a tool we developed to make uh, working with Kanban uh, easier. Uh, we could be able to take questions at the end as well. So what was the problem? The problem was that this little project, JBoss application server, developed by whatever, 30 developers around the world, it had grown enormously. So last year when I left the project, 
It was Red Hat's second biggest uh, product um, after Linux. Um, it has an open source uh, companion, like uh, a free companion. So Wildfly is a completely free, as in beer, an open source community project. And JBoss EAP is a supported open source community product. So two things. Um, open, the JBoss was a pl it's, a, it's a platform. So we include 150 components. Uh, a component could be like a logging library, like a tiny thing, or it could be a messaging broker, which is a product on its own. Uh, and those are made by teams. My team, we were about 50 people overall. But many components were developed by other teams in Red Hat or completely unrelated teams in the community. So other products were building on ours about a dozen and and of course we delivered in multiple of ways zips maven repositories rpms installer images container images you know lo lots of stuff quick starts doc, doc, um, docs um, we have lots of supported streams five series dead now so six series seven series and a set of uh, Matrix we had to support, so four JDKs, eight operating systems, four chipset architectures, 19 uh, databases. So you can imagine just to run the full test suite, which was 200,000 tests, took two weeks on massively parallelized hardware. So it's a, it's a big project. And even better, this is developed still by a community of uh, employees now spread around uh, 15 countries. Uh, so the biggest sub team in the, this team was like three people, more or less, not collocated. Still many working from their bedroom if, if they want. Now, um, when Red Hat acquired the boss, they introduced some minimal process and it was pretty much waterfall. So Requirements, development, testing, in that order. And the way we did it was we had periodic builds every two weeks or three weeks, depending on the phase. And the early builds will be developer builds, like alpha versions. Uh, engineering builds would be, um, uh, re let's say, beta quality, so feature complete, more or less. And then release candidates, assuming you know if they were okay that you could release them uh, as GA. Now, one of the issue, well, those are long cycles, so you can imagine that a minor release cycle for us was um, a year, eighteen months maybe. A major cycle, two years, three years, and. What was the problem? Uh, in some cases, when a minor cycle overlapped a major cycle, so the team worked on JBoss 6.4, and at the same time, we were doing JBoss 7. Um, this left this cycle open for too long, the, the planning cycle for the next major release. So maybe this rings a bell to you. Uh, but in JBoss 7, it was a ridiculous situation where this was open for 14 months. So 14 months, we have a product manager coming and say, I want this and this and this and this. You know, how much time? Yeah, and we go and, you know, give a proposal. And then next month, oh, I want also this, 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 but remove this. How much time? And then this on and on and on. We waste, you know, infinite amount of time just doing this recalculation. So that was a problem. Another problem was um, when you work in the community, things are kind of easy because someone has a need, they develop a feature, they bring the feature, it's good or bad, you know, we keep it or we throw it away. But when you work with customers, you go through product management, they bring a request, we have to analyze it, implement it, and quite often when you reach the end of this cycle, you figure out that, oh, this is not what they wanted. You know, and in such a big project, of course, to, to just say, you know, tell me uh, 
how far are you with the release? And you go, mm, you know, it looks okay, you know, but uh, how much exactly you're doing, you need a week to just figure things out. And at the same time, sticking to a release schedule, you know, was like a impossible, more or less. And at that point, it was, you know, boss comes out and with a solution. Of course, uh, we have to go agile, yeah? And um, when people think about agile, what do they mean? They want you to do Scrum, yes. They want you to do Scrum. And it was a big Scrum time in Red Hat where um, we had a team, the OpenShift team, which builds our Kubernetes distribution, that had made the transition to Scrum and they were like the role model. So naturally, every other manager wanted us to do the same. Um, and I talked to them. I talked to them to try to figure out, you know, is this for us really? Uh, and I saw, I saw a couple of problems very quickly. Uh, first of all, how to resource this effort. Um, I calculated I needed to build six scrum teams and a scrum of, of scrums on top, which means, you know, equivalent amount of scrum masters, um, product owners. We just had one product manager, right? How the hell are we going to clone the product manager into? We, we have to make the developers be product owners, essentially. And then we, you have to consider this is an open source project, uh, many sub teams, veteran developers working together for years, you're using their own processes. Uh, so if I go and tell them, ah, now you have to do Scrum, you know, there will be a revolution was imminent. And they were working well. I mean, there's not, there was nothing to fix there in how they worked. Um, plus, the, what we say lead time for us, it, it, it was a big, big. So for us, a feature might take a couple of months. So if you put a new policy in the clustering layer, it's not something you can do in two weeks, right? You, it, and it's also hard to break into smaller pieces to deliver in short sprints. So Scrum didn't look as if it was fitting very well into this project. And again, what problems we really want to solve? Because uh, people often forget, they go to the solution and they forget you know, the reason they go to the solution. So. I wanted to do something about this planning thing it was ridiculous, you know. And I'm very big fan of doing less planning because I know that we're not that smart. You know, often we think we are very smart and we will figure things out in detail and it never works, of course. And the other thing is I want to protect my developers from harassment, from product management. Um, and improve this coordination between different teams. There's a feature, we agree on the feature, and then t uh, testing comes and documentation comes. Somehow do this better uh, and f provide visibility into all of this. So, so if you think about those aspects, Kanban is a much better fit. And this is how we decided to you know, give Kanban a go and see how far we can go with this. So things I liked about Kanban from the start was um, it's a true pool model. So you pull work according to your capacity. Uh, you don't even have to do micro planning uh, at a sprint level. So basically for a release, the idea was that we prioritize the backlog. We agree on some let's say themes for the release, the, the higher level goals. We want to have uh, security clustering and Java E7, whatever. And everything else, you know, if it makes it, it makes it. Yeah, we won't sweat on it. Um, the good thing about Kanban is you can fit it onto an existing project, initially without changing anything. And I love this. I love this because I didn't have to break the system. 
Uh, I also love the fact that I could start experimenting with Kanban with far less resources. I didn't have to, to train too many people. I had a guy that we more or less were looking into process stuff, and together we were trying to see you know, how to make this happen. Um, now, another cool thing with Kanban is uh, it forces you to understand how you work. Because to visualize, to analyze the states, etc., you have to, you know, put down the steps, the handoff points, the deliverables, who does what. And quite often this uh, knowledge is lost in the system. Years of work, some people, you know, they just, it's in their head, it's tribal knowledge. It's hard to, to identify, and this kind of forces you to do that, if you do it correctly. Um, and the idea was that, you know, you put everything down, you visualize, and then iterate and slowly improve. So that looked interesting. So our first approach with Agile, we would got, get rid of this ridiculous planning phase. Uh, we introduced something, a new, a new state in the workflow, so that was the analysis state, which initially developers, you know, they didn't like it a lot, but the idea was that when we pull a, a feature from the backlog, we will first try to come up with a very short description of how we're going to do it. Um, it could be anything. You, you could put it on the Jira, you could put it on a Google Doc, it, that didn't matter, but we had to agree that the developer, together with the tester and the docs guy, would have a common understanding of the problem. Uh, and if it didn't work, they will send it back to the product manager asynchronously, so we don't depend on one another. That was the idea. And after completing this stage, then you would go on to actual development. Sometimes you had to build a prototype because you just didn't know, you know how exactly you would implement something. Now, uh, people, when they think about Kanban, you know, that's the picture that comes in mind, which is great, but when you put Kanban on a real complex project, you get a mess like this. So those are not three states, those are 23 states. Uh, three of them were kind of new, it was all this analysis thing I told you about, but the majority was our first attempt to capture our work in a linear fashion, in a linear Kanban fashion. And that was a bit like devastating because the very first problem we faced was how the hell you visualize this on a board? You see, if you look at more, most tools, they are able to, you know, they show a few columns and then they try to squeeze everything in there and you don't see anything uh, and it's either very ugly or very slow. Uh, I mean, no, it was impossible. We, we tried, of course, the uh, Agile plugin of Jira. Uh, it was very static, very slow. It didn't do the, the work, at least back then that we... We also looked at other tools, external tools. But the problem is then you have multiple sources of truth, state to synchronize between different trackers, and it becomes more difficult. And at that point, we got our first breakthrough because we said, you know, what the hell? Um, let's write our own visualizer for Jira. We're, you know, very much in Jira. Um, so, and Jira has a plugin mechanism, so you can write your own plugins. So, one guy said, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write a plugin to solve this problem, which is to, you know, uh, visualize many states, essentially, in a fast and efficient way. And, and this plugin now is called Overboard. There's a little uh, circle over the A. Apparently, this is, this is Norwegian. The guy's Norwegian. So I will, I'm going to show you a bit of the plugin at the end of the talk. Uh, so right there, we solved our first problem. You know, we, uh, because it was either this or you know, you go back and you do Scrum. So. So we kind of, you know, saved it at this point, and, and that was the first attempt. So we started with that, and like half halfway in the release, we realized that there's still something 
you know, wrong. And what was wrong was that, I don't know how you're doing Kanban yourselves, um, but uh, Kanban is very serial, very sequential. And you have a complex workflow and you have to ma map this on this sequence of steps that doesn't map very well often because reality is complicated and oftentimes you have many people working on something and those people are at a different state. So let's say you have both a development and tester on the feature and docs. Maybe testing is ahead, maybe development is ahead, maybe docs is ahead or behind. Uh, so how, how you capture this? One, one way would be to have like a, one issue and you link to other issues into other trackers, but quickly it becomes unmanageable, very hard. So at one of our meetings, we, we came up with this idea, yeah, why not we put on the Kanban card those colored lines you see to represent those other things that happen at the same time. And in this example, those are initials, so TD would be test development, and test development have their own states, so in this case, four states. But any of these boxes can be completely separate. So uh, documentations have their own workflow and they have 11 states for this little box there. Product docs, it's the last one uh, at the end. Um, and then, yeah, if we do that, then we keep all the information onto one card so we don't need a lot of uh, tickets to track it. It's in one place. And since we write the tool, we can visualize it also. You know, we can do whatever we want. And in practice, this is implemented very simply on the Jira project. You have extra fields. So basically, all the data is on the Jira ticket. There is no magic. You know, one source of truth. And when we did that, that was a breakthrough because suddenly, the work, the workflow could be simplified. So we got rid of about a third of states that were essentially pseudo states or, you know, workarounds to do away with the seriality of Kanban. Um, and it made things a lot more correct and pleasant to the eye as well and simpler. So that's good. That was, you know, great. So we completed the release, planning went smoother, uh, and it's a revelation to realize that all those guys that were pressing you for, you know, give me a date, when you do this, when you do that, you know, they disappeared. Which made my point that it wasn't needed. It wasn't needed in our project. In some other projects, maybe it's needed, but not on our project. Um, so we had more time to spend off on actual development. Then this analysis phase, although it was like extra work for everyone, it helped the guys to communicate more. So development and testing went more hand in hand. They had a better understanding of what they were doing and they would always kick back the issue to the product manager and say, oh, you know, this is bullshit or I don't understand this. This is what we're doing. Do you agree or not? So we would capture earlier things before they went, you know, to production more or less. So, yeah, better. Overall, we did better. Not like f fantastically great, but we did better. Um, yeah, and some problems we still have. Um, development, the net development time compared to testing was still not too much. And the problem for us, it's on, on such a complex system, when you put everything together and you test, things break. And I had this empirical rule that when someone came to me and said, oh, we're ready, I knew that we needed seven more builds to be ready, ready. And it was a magic uh, empirical rule that was verifying itself every single time. So you can imagine that you needed a, an extra 
three months to complete the release after you think it's ready. Um, when you merge something, it, it, it's hard to undone. Uh, so you just have to push forward um, and so on and so forth. I won't get too much detail. So in the next iteration of Kanban, um, we wanted to improve on those things and something else also happened at, at that time and that else was the, the cloud. I'm sure you've heard this word a few times lately, but um, there was this requirement that we also deliver a version of our, of our product for cloud-based development and those guys are more eager to receive features so they would like to have it every three months which for us, it was like, uh, you know, you have to break the speed of light because if our uh, average release uh, cycle was 18 months, to bring for to from 18 to three was a six time reduction. So it was like a very big deal. Yeah, and that will target OpenShift, which is our Kubernetes distribution. And this is, where let's say all the forces of the universe combined to do magic. Um, at that point we discovered that all this groundwork we've done with Kanban, with the tool, with the parallel states on the card, uh, contributed to make possible what I will describe you. So we decided to time box the project. So we would release the community product project Wildfly every three months, strictly every three months. Um, and then after three months, we would productize it a little bit, release of the product one, two, three times. Every third or fourth time, we would do make our normal full productization phase to release the long-term release. Something like the way Java releases now, um, Maybe it rings a bell to you. Um, now, to make this possible, some things had to change. One thing was we switched to, uh, to branching uh, for feature development. So essentially, every feature will get its own branch. The team will assemble, they will do the, the work, but they will also do a lot of the testing. So a lot of the testing that will normally happen at the end of the cycle, we did it right there in the brands. Integration testing, sometimes performance testing, as much testing as we could. So as to be certain that by the time we merge, we're you know, as certain as we can that this is complete, which is a lot of work. But uh, the, the interesting thing was that those parallel states that I showed you somehow mapped well to the merging preconditions. So before we merge, we need to have um, analysis done, coding, testing, documentation, uh, some sort of uh, uh, review. So essentially, all those little boxes you see there, they had to turn green, which is great because it gives you a visual clue that, yeah, this is ready to be merged or not. And combining everything together, we came, of course, to the realization that development is not a linear process, we knew, we knew that, but it's highly iterative and highly un unregular. So you do analysis, you implement some stuff, you do some testing, you go back to analysis, uh, you develop community docs, do a test plan. Sometimes all of those happen at the same time. And we're able to track them through our parallel tasks. And when all those are ready, then you reach the point where you say, okay, this is the final review. Is it good to go? Yes, we put it in the main line. And of course, more testing will be, complete, will be done there. And sometimes, of course, you find bugs. But uh, there is a much less possibility for uh, bugs and errors and regression. That was the first time that we managed to break my own empirical rule of seven, and we managed to bring them down to two to three, which is great. It's like the, the speed of light for a project of this magnitude. 
Um, let's talk a bit about uh, tooling. So, yeah. So why we did the, the plugin? Because we wanted to stay on Jira. We couldn't make Jira work for us. We tried external tools. None was good enough for what we wanted to do. Um, and the initial thing we tried to do was to visualize those many states, um, be able to do horizontal scrolling. Uh, we wanted more dynamic filtering. Most of the tools are very static. So you go and set up a filter for a, to create a swim lane, for example. What if you have 50 components, right? You need 50 filters. Um, and then the tool wouldn't understand our uh, additions to the workflow, like parallel tasks. So overboard to the rescue, I go straight to a demo. And I realize I'm the first one to do a demo in this uh, conference, right? This is Jira. I'm, I'm actually connected through my mobile phone, so I'm going to show you live data. Uh, I, hope, I hope I don't break anything. So what we did was to... The plugin is part of Jira, right? So it's installed in the server. So you go there, and hopefully it's going to load. Okay. So I have different boards for different projects. Is it big enough? Yeah. So EP73. So, so it loads. And you see a different picture from what you're used to. But those are our Kanban cards. And of course, you can scroll up and down as usual. But you can scroll left and right. And it's quite neat, right? It's quite fast. Um, you can also uh, put uh, uh, group states together, so those are development states. And I can collapse all of them at the same time. There are counters to show you, oh, I have 35 issues here. Uh, I can collapse this one or not. So basically I can see, oop, I can see wherever I want. And because data is cast on the server, it's, it's very fast. Now, I can create any dynamic view I want. So I go there and I say, I feel like creating swim lanes per component. So you do that, and boom, you get it automatically, right? Swim lanes per component. Um, and this also changes the URL. So basically, if I go on another window, a any view I, I see, I can go to another window and just paste it, and I should get the same view. So that's a very easy way for the team to exchange views. Um, if you work in security, for example, you might not care about anything else. And you can go and say, yeah, show me only the security stuff Yeah, here. So see only this, there's a security sub team doesn't care about the universe. So yeah, they just see their own issues. You can see their faces, etc. Um, and this is also dynamic, right? Um, and if there is a change in the server, it immediately reflects in the view because it polls every 10 seconds for for changes. Clicking on an issue just goes you takes you directly to to the underlying issue. Uh, so this one doesn't keep any state on its own. It's just a viewer, essentially a smart viewer. Um, those are the parallel states. If you click there, you get, you know, I can change it. I won't do changes now. This is live data, so I'm not touching it. Um, you will see also, like what I told you before, documentation have their own insane number of states, but it's their own problem. But still, we put it on the same card. They don't have to track it elsewhere. And I can filter in any arbitrary, crazy way. I can say, give me all the issues of the of uh, Farah. Farah is the lady here uh, that are stuck waiting for documents, or stuck with development, or they're complete but are not reviewed. 
any any you know any view you can do it from from here and you can bookmark it essentially um, we also have an alternative view which is called the the rank view so let's say I go to this project and say show me the rank view which is a simplified view so imagine you are the product uh, manager product owner and you filter by I can make a swim yeah you want to check out the priority of the let's say again security issues yes our favorite example so I see only security issues and this is the rank so this is the most important one right I can change the rank up and down so product manager will go there we set the rank per component per team essentially sub team uh, and this matrix shows how far this has progressed so it's is it at the beginning so it, this is still the backlog this is work in progress at some point it will go there uh, this is like exception states when something is stuck we, we push it there and that's also very simplified and for the developer also they don't have to look at all the information so the cool thing is on one board we can either have the state of the full project you know hundreds of issues or just a few components that, that we choose I'm sh I will show you quickly also um, how this is configured essentially configuration is really uh, graphic tooltips the important bit it, it's a JSON document essentially that shows you know what are your states those are my states that are interesting to me this is the the project I'm pulling data from so I'm pulling data from the EP7 project for this release and pretty much everything else is let's say syntactic sugar it's like which fields are interesting to me what colors I would show what tooltips I will present there's no other state in there it's like visualization state and filtering state to pull the data uh, initially and um, yeah and that's it so let me go back to my slides to recap um, we did manage to release quarterly which is, was like uh, our target our dream whatever um, we created this new product essentially with the same resources the same amount of people um, and uh, what was magic was we did it with one guy all these things that I showed you the plugin the introduction of Kanban in a project of 50 people um, the running of the process we did it with one guy and myself kind of giving some directions uh, in contracts the other team was occupying you know seven scrum masters uh, they have named the crown developers to be product owners and I, I don't know what else to run what looks to me an equivalent you know uh, process they have a different domain so they can deliver a button I put a button on a screen and that's a you know it's a feature I can release we are more in the platform space so we make something more uh, complex and, and uniform and if let's say I could offer my last pieces of advice so Kanban can work with very complex projects um, and whenever this question comes you know do you do scrum you do Kanban it's two different things so it, I like to imagine as scrum being a framework a box so it's a box it defines roles responsibilities ceremonies uh, time frame so it defines the edges of the box Kanban can fit into different size boxes so you can do Kanban with sprints or not you can do Kanban you know in in other types of setup uh, so it can fit into different type boxes and cares a lot about how you actually work what is that you do how you break up the the work into pieces analyze the states hand of points deliverables 
visualize it. Uh, so it's, on, it's not either or, you can do both. You can do Scrumban or any other crazy combination. But it's very, very essential to understand uh, why you're doing it, uh, what problem you try to solve, and what type of tooling you're going to use. Because tooling can make it or break it. You know, if bad tooling can really discard the team, they don't want, they want like to use it, uh, it makes your life difficult. So we solve that by essentially adapting the tooling to our needs. We create extensions uh, for that, uh, rather than adapt our process to the limitations of the tool. So my call to action, if, if, you, if you use Jira, you know, give it a spin. We, we've open sourced it. We do, everything we do is open source in, in Red Hat. So it's free as in beer, free as software. Um, we welcome people to try it and maybe, you know, try it with a simple project, see if it works for you. The good thing, again, is you can plug it in on an existing project. It's just an alternative view. That, that's what it is. But a, but, but a very powerful view, very powerful uh, query, dynamic queries. There's nothing static in the tool. You can query any crazy combination of things. It's fast, at least in the setup we've used, like, uh, you know, let's say 100 people looking at the board. It works for that. I don't know if you want to use it for 1,000 people, but, you know, I'm sure we can uh, find a way to make it work. Um, yeah, so try it out and let us know. And I'm done. We can. Thank you, Dimitri. Uh, we have time. We have a little bit of time, yes, because we have another talk happening downstairs, and I want everybody to gather here for the final talk of the evening. Uh, so while we wait for that, we can either you guys can stretch or you can ask questions. Um, let's go. Let's do that. Hi, thank you for this presentation, and nice tool, by the way. So you, you've uh, talked about a lot uh, the first uh, principle of Kanban, which is visualize your work, because it gives you the ability to, to know what is happening. But you didn't say anything about the other principles, like limit work in progress, which increases your throughput. I saw the, the numbers on the top of every step. So would you like to elaborate? Did you try anything limit work in progress, or you increase your throughput? Yeah. We, we have not introduced work in progress limits. Uh, we were in the next step to build in the tool the ability to enforce them. We were not, we're not quite certain if we need those for our use case because um, we have small sub teams, so every sub team is like two, three people, right? And the way we do it by by pulling work, they do as much as they can, right? It's not that we agreed that, uh, oh, you know, we're going to push them with, you know, 10 features for their release, and somehow we have to protect them. We do it, let's say, like a messaging system, auto self-balancing. Uh, but we haven't really spent time on work in progress yet. There's a question up there at the top. Thank you. Hello. Good, this works. Um, thanks for the nice talk. Very interesting. So it spawned a lot of questions for me. I will throw three at you, and you can just choose which you want to answer. Um, first one would be if you're um, timeboxing your releases again, it feels more scrumish kind of. So are you planning those releases ahead? Like what features go in, what go out? Um, second related questions, are you estimating your tasks, what you're doing? And uh, last question uh, just vanished. Um, so let's go for the, for the okay, first two. All right. So how do we plan what goes into a release? For those three months iterations, we have some, uh, let's say, at the beginning of the cycle, we put down a list and we say those are the big themes, themes for this three month release. So every sub team will, will have to come up and say 
based on the backlog, I see I can roughly, roughly do X, Y, Z, roughly, yeah? If something is a must-have, it's a different um, discussion, but since we started to time box, we will push it to the next release. So, so those are not really hard uh, commit commitments. Are, those are like best effort estimates. Uh, so as a result, we also don't spend much time really trying to be accurate. And I can give you another story, like being accurate for something that will happen in one sprint, in two sprints, maybe makes sense. But uh, for projects of this size, I, I give you an example. We did the refactoring of the security systems in the server. It's a very hard job. We analyzed it uh, meticulously. We broke down the work into 150 tasks, whatever. We failed miserably. It took 17 iterations. So I guarantee you there's no human brain in the universe that can estimate what will happen after 17 iterations. Maybe we don't know what happens after two. So why spend the time? Good, thanks. I'm happy to take one more. You raise your hand really high, I might see it. He has another one, yeah. He remembered. Yeah, the last question. Um, uh, KPIs, do you have key KPIs from Kanban you look at? I'm sure you're monitoring your process in some kind. A little bit. Now QE is trying to push some, you know, KPIs. Uh, yes, yes and no. Uh, nothing I would feel like, you know, I cannot live without it. So, again, we're not experts. I'm sure there are plenty of experts here to, you know, give you better advice than me. All right, then. Well, thank you very right. much, Dimitri.